So, I've given you the basic introduction to the speech if I were going to give it. <coughs> Let's talk about what I've already done here so that you can see some of the things that I was trying to do and, and assess them. What was good about what I did so far? Isaiah. You not only told us about how we tell but told about the quality of what you know, she had in her life. So I gave you some new information you weren't familiar with, Rebecca, and then Wayne. Engage the audience right away. Yeah. You say engaged or gauge. Engage. Okay, that's true, Emma. Wayne? You gave us a visual, which you would like to so put everything that you're trying to talk to us about there together. So okay. Multiple modalities, you say. Yes? Grace? That's the same point I was going okay. to <laughs> Melissa, were you going to add anything? She said it. All right. Now, you said I engaged the audience. Now, I also gauged the audience. What does that mean, by the way? We saw how much we knew about her. Yeah. Now, you're aware that you can ask questions for lots of reasons in this world. Sometimes you ask a question because you don't know the answer yourself. The research shows that instructors almost never ask questions that they don't know the answers to, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily an endorsement of instructors, actually. <laughs> okay. Sometimes you ask questions because you're challenging someone. You want them to think. Why is it that health care is so expensive in the United States? I'm not really asking for an answer there, but I'm asking you to think about it, right? I'm making a point. Or sometimes I ask a question because I want to know, how much, how much do you know? In a speech, that's a good technique because depending upon who you're talking to, if you find out that the audience already knows everything you thought you were going to talk about, you may have to stretch for new information. Or if they're not familiar with your topic at all, you may have to change what you're going to say. So this goes into audience analysis, which I'm not going to talk about now. But I ask the question, what do you know about her, or why, what do you admire about her, partly to see what you already know. Now, I asked the question and I wrote the answers up on the board. Why did I write the answers on the board? We could have a visual representation, okay. remember what we're what we're going to be talking okay, about. Okay, for the purposes of memory. Mm -hmm. Any other okay. reasons why I might have done that? Don? I would use that in my body mm -hmm. and then take it to my introduction. Possibly. Okay. I, I might actually use the material in the speech. Yes. Jackie? Because we said that those are the things that we admire about her and that we know you're, you're going to mm -hmm. explain more on that. Okay. That way we stay involved because mm -hmm. we pick the topic. I agree. And I'm going to come right back to that, Brett. If you didn't hear it, you can see it. Yeah, okay, so to reinforce it in case somebody didn't hear it. I'm going to expand on what Jackie said there because I have a theory that I haven't seen in any public speaking books, but it has to do with the technique that I use. Let's see, perseverance was Rebecca, strength was Rebecca, overcoming odds was Grace. Now, if I didn't say anything further about these three things, in the hour, my guess is that three people would be looking at the board more occasionally than others. Rebecca, Rebecca, and Grace. Okay. Who usually writes things on the board in the class? Instructor. instructor. What does it mean when the instructor writes something on the board? Pay attention to it. Pay attention to it because it's important. It's important. All right. Well, generally it's the instructor who decides that. But in this case, I have essentially said, I'm turning it over to you. You are important. Your idea matters. So throughout the rest of the speech, if I were talking long, Rebecca and Rebecca and Grace would be looking up there, thinking to themselves, that's my idea. <laughs> I gave him that idea. So anytime you use this technique in a speech or in a conference or in a business meeting, you are essentially validating your audience, in addition to all the other things that you mentioned. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the introduction, the final part of the introduction. I would say, now you know something about Helen Keller. I'm going to talk about three of her speeches which embodied eloquence and idealism. And I'm going to tell you what they are. There's one in 1955 to Harvard University, one in 1947 to the National Academy of Arts and Letters, and one in 1916 to the Women's Peace, Peace Party. Okay. 